Hi everyone, welcome to the Miracoach Wednesday seminar series. This year we are organizing our seminar series under the broader project, broader uh, the bridging the migration and urban studies project is a European Union funded evening project. It's a collaboration between Koch University in Istanbul, Turkey, uh, Pompeii Fabri University in Barcelona, Spain, and the, uh, and the University of Amsterdam in the Netherlands. Uh, you can also always follow us on Broader and MiraCoach social media accounts and websites to stay informed about our up upcoming activities, including seminars, talks, and summer schools. Today we have uh, Elif Topal Demirolu, an assistant professor of political science and public administration at Marmara University. She received her BA from the Middle East Technical University and her MA and PhD degrees from Marmara University. She has published on topics including local migration governance, local democracy, social movements, and local politics. Her research focuses on international migration and local governance in cities. And this is also one of the topics we focus in our uh, broader project. So we are uh, excited to have, therefore, Elif Topal as our guest today and to hear about, uh, to hear her talk titled Migrants in a Small City of Turkey on the Edge of Coexistence. Following the presentation, we will have a Q&A session. Please feel free to prepare and write your questions in the chat box or in the Q&A box, or you can just unmute yourself and ask your questions directly during the Q&A session. Now, I would like to give the floor uh, to Elif Topal. Okay, uh, thank you very much uh, for your kind um, invitation and kind brief uh, description. Uh, and also thank you very much for the participants uh, to be here uh, today um, to uh, hear my, my voice and my study. And uh, let me start with um, my primary motivation uh, for this study, where, where my primary motivation stems from, that uh, my biannual visits to Elaza, uh in every year, that I became curious about um, the coexistence practices of refugees, particularly the Syrian refugees and the local residents. Uh, because a city, um, I see that most of the participants um, are um, from Turkey, uh, maybe you know where, where the Elaza is, uh, but uh, because as in a city like a small state Elaza, you can walk from um, uh, one end of the city center to uh, another, uh, approximately one and a half an hour. And uh, in your this journey, you can see the concentration of refugees on the space in the space uh directly and this phenomenon can uh, draw your attention as a like let's let's say that both urban scholar and also the international migration scholar scholar uh this phenomenon can draw your attention in every time uh so and also two pivotal events um uh, also uh intensified my curiosity about these coexistent uh, coexistence practices uh, the first one is the, the flare-up of anti-refugee, anti-refugee, let's say, the sentiment following a fight occurred in August 2018, in particularly in Sanayi neighborhood, Sanayi Mahallesi, uh, one of the um, central neighborhood of uh, Elazığ and also the industrial zone of Elazığ, the oldest industrial zone of Elazığ, uh, which I choose as the field study of my research. And the second event is the uh, heroization of a Syrian refugee um, named Mahmoud, uh, who during the, the post-earthquake period, uh, let's say, um, managed to rescue a family by his own uh, opportunities, uh, possibilities uh, from the rubble, gaining the media attention. Maybe you also uh, remember from the mainstream media, the Mahmoud, the, the boy Mahmoud, um, they uh, covered Mahmoud as a as a hero, a, a refugee hero who saved a Turkish woman and Turkish man uh, life uh, from the earthquake rubble. 
Uh, so um, in this context, I have formulated my research question in this study that uh, to explore how such significant events influence uh, and change the refugees, both the daily practices and also the coexistence practices in a relatively small city like uh, Elaza. Uh, in the upcoming sections of my um, presentation, I will uh, briefly try to give the group profile of Elaza and the Sanai Mahalis as a case, uh, case uh, uh, location. And also I will explain uh, my research methodology and uh, my literature that I benefited from. Uh, so my focus will be, I'm sorry, uh, will be the phenomenon of being a refugee in a small city mainly. Uh, I will explore these phenomena and the, the coexistence practices and the three main headings. These headings uh, was uh, the, um, the, the, the analytical categories of the findings from my uh, field study, uh, the daily encounters and the coexistence overcoming the poverty to loop and also the responsibility shift to local actors. Maybe we can call it as the state invisibility and the increasing role of the local um, NGOs. <clears throat> okay, um, this is um, a, a short table of uh, the, uh, the profile of Elaza consisting of the, the location uh, the administrative, let's say, the profile, and also uh, population and the economic structure of Elaza. As far as we know, Elaza is, a, uh, uh, let's say, a, a relatively small city. Somehow it's in some uh, research and in some, let's say, reports of the um, in, uh, state reports, it's called as the relatively middle-sized city, uh, but it's in the uh, first degree priority in development area. And also in terms of its economic structure now, it, its economy uh, based on, depend on, let's say, the agricultural sector and predominantly the mining sector. Uh, there are two important, um, let's say, significant periods in the industrialization, uh, in terms of industrial uh, development. One of them is the uh, 1960s and then between the 1950s and 1970s because a cement factory uh, built in the very center of the city, in the very center of the Sanai neighborhood. And the second development was the, the construction of the state railways, which made city uh, by different kinds of connection with the neighborhood, um, in the neighboring cities, as well as the Western cities, which also made the city as an attraction, uh, let's say area for the, uh, for the workers, for the, um, working migrants from, again, the neighbor, uh, neighboring cities. And also in terms of refugee settlement and the, the migrant management, uh, it is a, is a satellite city for international uh, protection applications. According to the data uh, from the year 2021 that I conducted the uh, research, we can see that approximately, <coughs> sorry, uh, approximately uh, 12,000 uh, Syrian refugees registered in Elaza, uh, which um, means that uh, it's the 2% uh, um, of the total population. But also there is an important um, institution organization, not only in Elaza, but also around Turkey, called as the Humanitarian Relief Foundation, IHH, uh, they also record their own data set um, in terms of um, settlement of the refugees and the migrants, not only Syrian, but also other nationalities. Uh, I uh, conduct, I uh, interviewed uh, them also, and they said approximately uh, 15,000 migrants living in uh, Elaza. Uh, so uh, in, the, in terms of identity, identi and let's say the et ethnical um, dimension, uh, uh, there are now three important population categories living in uh, Sanayi neighborhood. One of them is the Turkish um, uh, Turkish people. A second one is the Kurdish uh, ones, uh, predominantly the Zaza population. And the third one is this, uh, <coughs> sorry, is the Syrians. 
But Syrians also um, do not, uh, it cannot be categorized under a homogenized one uh, because uh, we know that uh, the, the, the Syrians living in Sana'i neighborhood predominantly coming from the Resort of, of um, the, the Syria. And also there are domes uh, living in Sana'i neighborhoods, which are also the uh, the day resource, day resource Syrians um, do not like uh, domes, uh, according to the interviews and interview findings, etc. Which means that it's a, uh, it's not a, a totally ethnic enclave, but it's a somehow a, a neighborhood uh, consisting of different identities, different ethnic identities. And when it comes to the political stance of the city and also the neighborhood, uh, Eleza is known as a very state-centric approach and a nationalist approach because of the a very family, uh, a famous figure, Mehmet Ar, the, uh, the, one of the previous, uh, let's say, the Minister of Internal, and who known to be as a very nationalistic figure, and also uh, little to no leftist tendency, but somehow uh, last five or six years, we can see the increasing support for the, the, the Kurdish political uh, party. And more or less, this is the, let's say, a, a quick picture of uh, Elazığ and uh, particularly uh, Sanayi Mahallesi. So now I want to touch upon my methodology. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, so, uh, I try to uh, categorize Elazığ as a, uh, let's say, a small uh, city, small size city, um, uh, let's say, uh, but nurturing from uh, the uh, Gilekşiler and Çağlar's approach as a low scale ski according to their uh, rescaling approach. And uh, for uh, reason for this selection, uh, is that, that I underlined, I have already underlined, is the significant changes uh, from the post-earthquake period and the 2018 fight. And also, uh, I conducted my reviews and the research in the July and August 2021, and I spent two months in the city and in the neighborhood. Uh, I conducted uh, reviews as the semi-structured forms with open-ended questions. I um, interviewed with Syrians, Iraqi, and Afghan families, and individuals, local actors, local NGOs, uh, muhtars, and the uh, local residents and the local employers of uh, Elazığ. Uh, predominantly, the language of interviews uh, was in Turkish, but a Syrian uh, young uh, boy uh, helped me to translate um, Arabic to Turkish or the Turkish to Arabic. Uh, in the interview uh, period. And uh, I taken into consideration the, uh, let's say, the comfort of uh, interview. And uh, because of that, the uh, interviews uh, conducted um, occurred in refugees' homes or workplaces, tea gardens, coffee houses, and interviews' homes. Because of all that different kinds of settings, I had also the opportunity to observe the daily life of um, um, the, the member of neighborhood, not only the, uh, the Syrians or the refugees, but also the local people and how the daily life is going on on the uh, neighborhood. And also I um, included 18 interviews in my, uh, in my um, research, the uh, printed paper, but also I um, had the opportunity to enrich the data with the group discussions and the uh, something like focus group interviews with, with the help of the family members, uh, let's say the um, uh, friends from the tea gardens, the coffee houses, etc. So uh, it, it, uh, these kinds of events uh, enriched my data uh, also. So um, let me briefly um, again touch upon the literature that I benefited from. Uh, three important, three, um, three uh, let's say, the uh, main literature uh, I benefited from. One of them is the academic perspective of migration and local governance. Second one is the insights from the studies from small and medium-sized cities' role in migration. 
and migration governance, and also why and how uh, refugees or the migrants prefer to stay or live in the small or medium-sized cities. And the third one is the, the critical analysis of this rescaling approach and its relevance to the medium and the uh, small size cities. I just want to show up the, the, the second one. Um, I just want to show up the, uh, specifically the rescaling approach and the, 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 the opportunities that small cities can provide or cannot provide um, uh, to the migrants. Uh, here, uh, studies adopt the rescaling approach in migration um, studies generally define small cities as the low scale cities. They not provide many opportunities for immigrants, uh, let's say, uh, regarding employment, education, or different kinds of networks, whether the ethnic networks or the different kinds of social networks. And also they may lack the resources and experiences in immigration governance. And also, um, uh, but uh, on the other hand, uh, they, they may highlight the crucial role in uh, intermediate uh, uh, actors such as the managers of shelters, social housing associations, let's say the civil society or the local representatives uh, in uh, small cities, for example, a uh, uh, study conducted in small French cities. And also for the relatively medium-sized cities, the challenge of economic developments come to the forefront. Uh, attracting newcomers uh, to smaller centers can be difficult. Cities uh, of this size often lack like, uh, amenities, the urban amenities, let's say, or the regional transport facilities. And they uh, can attract the skilled workers also. Uh, and also research show that the development strategies focused on improving the quality of life, uh, financing public administrative uh, public investments, and supporting the human capital through the employment and entrepreneurship programs and opportunities, um, uh, let's say, uh, majorly in impact the local well in, in well-being of the local people. There is also a um, a contradiction between these types of, uh, let's say, the development strategies and the well-being of the uh, local people. And also uh, in the cases where the qualified or the entrepreneurial population does not come to city to prefer to build the new businesses or to uh, work in, uh, the, these small-sized uh, cities turn to the living spaces of immigrants only if uh, let's say they are accepted as a population that suffers from this rather being the carrier of developing industry and the economic development that we can more or less see this kind of uh, thing in the case of uh, Sanayi Mahallesi. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so let me start with uh, the first um, analytical category is the daily encounter and the coexistence. In this part, I try to explore the daily life, coexistence, and the social cohesion between the locals and the refugees, and try to give some uh, positive and negative interactions and their impact on the community relations, and also uh, try to discuss the uh, different kinds of different levels of inter integration. Um, let's say individual, family, or community layers of the migrant integration. And I want to uh, show you some specific quotations from the field study field data, and also some, uh, uh, again, analytical, different kinds of sub-analytical categories, uh, trying to analyze how uh, this coexistence and daily practices can survive. Uh, so these, uh, I saw three layers of community interactions, individual family friend relationship, relationship with government agencies, we can say that there is even no relationship even uh, apart from the signatures, apart from the approvals, apart from the renewal of the residence permits, etc. And the relations with socioeconomic structures, which means that relations with the labor market, the relations with the, let's say, the infrastructural uh, opportunities, etc., and also effect of conflict in Sanai neighborhood, 
uh, this is highly important because after this, let's say, the quarrel or conflict, it, it started with a quarrel, but then turned into uh, a fight uh, between the Syrian uh, population and and the local shopkeepers. Um, uh, so the local and Syrian community tensions led to a month of isolation for Syrians. They even uh, could not um, go on the uh, street that uh, on, 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 in front of their houses, and which means that here the local non-governmental organizations' role increased and they seem to be very visible. Specifically, the IHH's role here is important because in this one time, one month, I'm sorry, a one month period, IHA has provided uh, necessities uh, during the conflict period. And we can say that in this one month period, the Syrian population uh, were completely invisible in Sana'i neighborhood. Uh, so, <clears throat> also, uh, the, a notable, uh, this notable event, uh, the aftermath of the Syrian community being almost invisible with their needs being met with, with by the special um, uh, terms uh, developed by IHAHAS and the small uh, local government, uh, uh, school, uh, small local non-governmental organizations. And also um, the incident was fueled by uh, media portrayals and the political statements that intensified the uh, local people's, the local residents' resentment as they feel the Syrians were, were undoubtedly benefiting from state support and they are they were living in a very comfortable life in, uh, let's say, neighborhood. Uh, so the migrants' experience of the city is largely um, highly limited. Many do not explore beyond their immediate neighborhood, uh, except for the uh, very necessities, uh, let's say the feeling cut off from the broader community. Uh, women in particular face isolation due to conservatism and also they um, face these kinds of isolation than men in this conflict period uh, because of their language barriers and the care, care duties. Uh, so, and also somehow uh, the daily life normalized with the effect of earthquake, this is a positive effect of earthquake, and uh, particularly the Syrian women, uh, became visible in the streets of Sana'i neighborhood because they do not generally go to another neighborhood or another, to the city center. Uh, to the, uh, to, for example, Harput is a very touristic and historical place of el and none of the female um, Syrian that I uh, interviewed in, 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 ever visit the Harput, even don't know where the Harput was. So that they were only visible in the, uh, let's say, the Syrian uh, in, uh, Sanai neighborhood streets. And the Muhtar underlined that because of their high visibility in the uh, Sanai neighborhood, the um, Sanai neighborhood is known as the, the, the Syrian street in the uh, local people let's say the local people saying uh, this highlighting a distinct separation uh, where migrants have created their own spaces and services uh, let's say becoming more visible yet remaining apart from the local society uh, we can touch upon the effect of earthquake here uh, can be considered as the more positive insight because of the uh, Mahmoud as a hero um, rescued a wounded woman from the rubble of Elazığ earthquake, uh, was widely covered in both uh, local and the national media. And this development seems to have, uh, have softened the attitude of the approach of the local uh, people uh, towards the Syrian who have been living in neighborhood for almost one year uh, by avoiding and hesitating, in an, avoiding and hesitating, let's say, emotion. And also after the earthquake, um, they could not say much about the Syrians um, somehow as an example of this, let's say, the shifting uh, attitude uh, anymore, especially due to the increasing need of construction uh, workers uh, for the rapid construction of buildings. 
And also we can say that uh, these people experienced the Elazer earthquake and then the last year they also experienced the, uh, the effects of the uh, Kahraman Marash earthquake. So, which means that they needed more and more Syrian uh, workers uh, in the construction, uh, let's say the sector than before. <clears throat> Uh, so, and last thing about these coexisting and uh, daily life practices, uh, why these people prefer, let's say, it's not a kind of very a conscious pref preference, but somehow they have the flexibility to change their neighborhood or the, the, the district, uh, district etc. But um, they try to uh, prefer to stay uh, in um, Sanai neighborhood because uh, Sanai neighborhood uh, has the uh, most developed uh, organized uh, industrial zone in Elazığ, which means that uh, there are lots of job opportunity for them. Uh, and also they can participate easily uh, than uh, other neighborhood uh, participate in the labor market. But this uh, special and economic preferences causes migrants to become alienated from the other parts of the uh, uh, city and also alienated from the, let's say, the urban culture in Elazığ. In, in women, in, in the female Syrians, this can be seen very highly, but in terms of the male um, Syrians, also this is, an, this is an important issue. They do not even need to go to other part of the uh, <clears throat> Uh, city as well. So the uh, second analytical category is the overcoming the poverty loop or the poverty trap, but it's uh, somehow an overestimation if we call it as the poverty trap because uh, I this is the just uh, uh, let's say the findings from the field uh, research, not a very uh, broad uh, uh, broad research. Uh, but what I try to uh, uh, hear in this part. I tried to um, show the strategies employed by the migrants and the locals to combat the poverty and also the role of labor market, the state policies and the family structures in shaping the economic opportunities and also uh, the entrepreneurial efforts or the job market integration of the, uh, let's say, the refugees. Uh, there are two important um, uh, dimensions uh, in the poverty loop um, let's say the analysis uh, despite lacking the formal employment opportunities this is not special to Elazığ but uh, around the uh, country we can see that the the, the uh, formal employment opportunities are nearly close to uh, refugee population but some engage in the necessary entrepreneurship to sustain their livelihoods this necessary and I will I will delve in detail of this necessary entrepreneurship but uh, we, I, I, um, I just uh, show the, uh, this is a very pragmatic type of entrepreneurship uh, practiced in the neighborhood. And also the post earthquake period, locals uh, rented out damaged properties at higher rates to refugees, uh, a dynamic known as the exclusion uh, in, uh, exclusion in terms. And also, I try to uh, give specific quotations from um, the field research, field interviews. Uh, what are the some important? What are the some important uh, headlines here? Is that the local housing dynamics change uh, after the earthquake because the the local people did not want to uh, rent their houses to Syrians before the earthquake because of generally. Because because of the effect of the, uh, let's say, the fight after 2018, and the the the, uh, the members of the or the residents of the uh, Sanai neighborhood did not want to be known as the uh, residents of the let's say the uh, the Sanai street. But after earthquake, where uh, mm, uh, the uh, high numbers of buildings were damaged. Uh, these, these kinds of uh, uh, the earthquake effect uh, let locals to rent out damaged properties to refugees 
a phenomenon known as the exclusion in terms they if they could afford another house another house another uh, new house uh, relatively new house in a newly developing area in uh, Elazığ, for example, Doğu Kent, uh, where there are new houses, newly built houses with uh, with good opportunities, uh, they rented their houses to the predominantly Syrians. Uh, uh, so the um, quotation from uh, Muhtar is important here and very, um, let's say, uh, full of different kinds of contradictions. He says that do not believe that they do not seem to like Syrians. They should thank them. They rented out those rundown houses and workplaces that stood empty for years at uh, exorbitant prices. What is important here, uh, Syrians became the new, uh, let's say, the new owners of these kinds of uh, poverty, these kinds of lacking of uh, other uh, urban amenities and urban opportunities. And uh, also, um, we, uh, we can see the challenges uh, of the informal em employment. It's a uh, phenomenon for the refugees, um, not only in Turkey and also in different uh, parts of the world. Uh, they often work in informal sectors leading to exploitation and insecurity. This necessary entrepreneurship is common among refugees for basic needs, yet it isolates communities economically. They prefer, or I can say that, I can categorize this necessary entrepreneurship or describe this necessary entrepreneurship in two important dimensions that one of them is that they try to preserve their own cultural and the local cultural, let's say the, uh, their food culture, different kinds of spices, different kinds of ingredients, etc. They try to sell and buy in their own living environment. And second is that uh, highly related to this informal employment um, setting, because they um, suffer from exploitation and insecurity, uh, they try to find strategies uh, to, let's say, continue their own uh, businesses with the help of of course, with the help of the Turkish people, with the help of the uh, local residents. Uh, here, the um, some statistics, some numbers are highly critical uh, because we can divide this, uh, let's say, this strategy before the fight period and the post-fight period uh, because uh, uh, approximately there were uh, 3,000 people um, uh, who had, uh, let's say, who had the uh, entrepreneurship in um, a different kinds of, let's say, shopkeepers in Sanai neighborhood. But uh, because Eliza municipality sealed all of them, uh, and in, because, let's say, the uh, this workplace uh, operated without a proper uh, license, working license, approximately for three or four years, municipality sealed all of them, and also um, Sir Syrians would either work illegally or Syrians would run shops where the owner was uh, Turkish. Here, and also the um, shop owners who left their businesses to Syrians, uh, Syrian refugees, were also penalized by municipality and also as a um, governor for one year. Uh, these numbers are highly important because this was kind of the uh, necessary entrepreneurship. And uh, these sh uh, shopkeepers were, uh, let's say, the kinds of uh, clothing, hairdresser, snack, butcher, patissier, tobacco, uh, bakery, telephone selling, etc., etc. And these kinds of separation also reflects them predominantly after the um, fight period, a parallel society where interactions between refugees and the local community are highly limited. Uh, local residents often uh, perceive refugees, as we underline, as living highly comfortable uh, in their own segregated neighborhoods, which can sometimes lead to resentment and misunderstandings by the uh, local people. 
uh, this, uh, also a quotation from a Syrian female uh, refugee is important uh, because it shows that, uh, <clears throat> sorry, uh, it shows the uh, how these, um, let's say, the local housing dynamics change and these dynamics not only change the people's uh, renting strategies, but also uh, the daily lives, how these people can uh, afford not only their uh, living environment, but also their living conditions. Uh, so this is, I think this is the important part of the, the, the um, effects of the housing, local housing dynamics, post earthquake local housing dynamics to the daily life routine uh, of the uh, migrants. Sorry. And uh, the last categorization is the, let's say the state invisibility. I am not very sure to use these headings. Um, somehow I use the responsibility shift to local actors. We know that uh, increasing literature and the increasing, let's say the migration policy uh, making process a uh, day by day based on the local actors and the importance of the local actors in terms of local migration governance and the uh, multi-level migration governance, different actors and the different sectors on the different scales uh, should participate in the migration governance uh, because they know the different, let's say, the demands, needs, and the different attitudes of the local people. Uh, but somehow, uh, in the case of Elazığ, uh, from the interviews that I conducted, I saw that state even, um, um, the state as in the form of uh, a provincial uh, migration management, um, do not have any effect in the daily integration or daily routine of the, uh, let's say, the coexistence of the uh, local residents and the, the, the Syrian migrants. Uh, we can categorize these as the lack of adequate policy and support, uh, responsibility shift to local actors, particularly in these two pivotal uh, events, the fire and the earthquake. Uh, we can see the, uh, the, the visibility of the, let's say, the local NGOs, predominantly IHH, and the Muhtars, Muhtars uh, Muhtar was also uh, working very closely to IHH uh, with its um, predominantly, let's say, predominantly linked with uh, the family members and also friendship uh, links with IHH's members. And also, uh, he underlined that I, uh, um, he could also find support from uh, IHH members for the different types of needs and the necessities of the, uh, let's say, the, uh, the Syrian population living in the neighborhood, and impact on integration and the uh, social acceptance and the contrast with civil society role is highly important in this part. Uh, what is important here, uh, migrants and the local people, not only the migrants, but also the local people, like acknowledge the state's subtle role in the integration process, highlighting the gap between the policy design and its execution in the everyday life. Uh, the state ex activities generally should extend beyond formalities and the practical uh, support. Uh, as we know from the uh, very bulk uh, research in the migration and urban nexus, and the local, let's say, the migration and local level uh, nexus, uh, state should support also the, 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 the um, democratic setting, the cultural programs, specifically what migrants say, the skill recognition. Uh, but the central governments, particularly through the directorate, um, direct provincial directorate of migration management, has stepped up the uh, enhanced policy and practice capacity and yet we can say that there is a significant reliance on civil society for day-to-day -day migrant support. I want to give an example here. Uh, so, uh, for example, IHH's organization of summer Quran courses, uh, uh, courses, I'm sorry, to teach Turkish, um, to teach the religious, let's say, the staff to uh, migrant child and also the Turkish child. 
but uh, also they um, try to teach Turkish to uh, Syrian children in this uh, Quran uh, course, courses. Uh, this offers an alternative education, and we can call it as a uh, non-formal education uh, opportunity for refugee children, particularly excluded from uh, the school environment due to the uh, COVID-19 pandemic uh, conditions, in the pandemic conditions. This is an also uh, important incident that uh, in the remote education period, uh, the necessities of the refugee population, predominantly the, 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 let's say, the, the ones living in the poverty conditions, they don't, did not even have the mobile phones to follow the online courses. They did not even have different tablets or PCs in their homes, or they did not even have the internet uh, uh, connection and uh, technological let's say the uh, facilities so it was an important issue what the migrants uh, let's say wanted from state at these important uh, periods uh, the COVID-19 pandemic period uh, this is important as I employed and quotation from again a female um, Syrian migrant uh, my son had just started to read Turkish when the schools were closed and we had no equipment for online education. Uh, he always went to neighborhood to listen and follow the lessons, online lessons. We went to migration administration, the municipality and the muhtar, but we couldn't get a tablet phone. And they again um, managed to find a, um, a tablet with the help of IHAHA. Uh, so we can see a highly reliance on the uh, civil society rather than the state capacity or the capability. Uh, so, uh, and also the, the cultural acceptance and local norms are highly important because two parts of the uh, this issue, the local residents, the local people and the migrants, they both think that uh, the migration management, uh, the provincial migration management uh, should do something for the uh, integration, um, let's say the integration period, integration process, but uh, somehow the state is uh, inefficient, uh, inefficient for this uh, daily integration process. Okay, then uh, just I want to wrap up the findings and the, all these uh, categories. Uh, we can say that uh, refugees uh, experienced uh, refugees lived mixed experiences in uh, Nelazı and particularly in Sanayi Mahallesi because of the fight and the post earthquake pragmatic, uh, let's say, the social acceptance, and which lead us to the pragmatic solutions of the, both the uh, local people and the, uh, the, the refugee population. Uh, they adapt pragmatic solutions. Uh, like community networks and small entrepreneurship due to inefficient state support. This state support is in terms of, uh, let's say, the daily practices and the invisibility of state that we just underlined. And uh, what we can lead, uh, we can uh, reach to all, from all these findings that uh, uh, cities need for comprehensive strategies with the uh, uh, real participation of the uh, actors, local actors and the state actors, but also small cities can, uh, sh small cities should work more on, uh, let's say, uh, working together for the, um, how to improve the opportunities, how to improve the uh, provision for the refugee populations, as well as providing the local people's well-being. Okay, uh, this is all. Thank you very much uh, for your kind uh, patience. Uh, thank you.